Welcome to Writing a Screenplay. Welcome back. Today we are going to do note cards. We're going to do visual outlining. And this has been a long time coming. We've worked long and hard on getting these segments going. And we finally got to a good place. So now we're going to whoosh, throw some note cards on the cork board. And why writers in general like note cards is because... I've already said it like three times already, it's visual. So if you need to start moving some things, you can see the holes that you're leaving in your story. You might have too many love scenes early on, or too many, if it's a horror movie, you might have too many murders, and in the middle there's no murders. That might be intentional, that might be something you neglected when you were outlining. And you, when you do it in just this form here, you will you know, make mistakes like that because you're just not seeing it clearly. Up there, it's just it's just another view. It's another set of eyes, and it's very helpful. So we are going to do note cards today. A bunch of different colored note cards because we have, what is it, eight, nine segments that we have? So we have to have, I've decided to use a different colored note card for each segment. That makes this a lot easier. Normally, a card would be a character or I like to use red for murder um, stuff like that so you can see like okay we haven't seen this character in about 40 pages and that that, that was a mistake so that's why people use the colored note cards and they do visual outlining in general so this won't take too long I don't think um, it's gonna hurt the old wrist here as I write 40 some cards but that's fine. So what am I going to put on each card? I'm probably, there's a bunch of ways of doing it. Um, it's going to be pretty simple for this. It's just going to be scene location and what happens in the scene, what happens in the, in the, the card, and important story elements, notes, things that have an impact that might carry over, things that I might want to remember because if I try to move a segment you know, earlier, like, ah, this might play better earlier, but it's like, yeah, but that's going to affect two other segments because of these other aspects. So that's pretty much all I'm going to put on these. Like I said, this is a horror anthology. wasn't expecting to do that with this project. A lot of it's pretty easy, and this is going to be no exception to that. So I'm going to stop talking here and start writing all these scene cards. I can already feel my wrist hurting. I can already feel and then we'll we'll take it to the board and go from there. done the note cards here I'm going to show you what I did and I'm also going to show you a bit of a problem first things first there's the board above the board we have our, our segments invasion blind date good boy danger things and the rest and as you can see it's 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 color-coded that's what that is all about as you can see it is it is full as a full board uh, above it I have the title which guys gals I've changed it. The town that dripped blood. I've decided to go this route, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But back to the board here. Ah, <sighs> we've got a problem. We've got a problem. First of all, um, I like to put the segments up here. Usually, those are characters or subplots, and things get color coded appropriately. But since this is strictly segments, I mean that's just. That's just how it looks. That's good. It's pretty simple. It's pretty cut and dry. I have so many segments that I ran out of room and I had to put them over here by my little by my little wallpapers and, and my Billy Wilder screenwriting tips. You got to remember your screenwriting tips. You know, don't be boring. Don't be boring. So here's the problem. Uh, as you can see, some of these note cards are vertical like that one, and some are horizontal, like that one. I like to have the vertical note cards 
for simple scenes, scenes that exist and need to be on the board. I like to have the horizontal note cards for longer scenes or important scenes. And I think I have too many horizontal cards to the point where I've run out of room. I believe act two ends, which is right here. Let me show you how that works. I'm sure most of you are familiar with uh, the board. But that first row right there, that's act one. That bottom row right there, that's act three. These two rows right here, boom, boom, that's act two. So we have act one, act two, act three. Simple, it's very simple. Um, writers have been doing this for quite a while. There's a lot of ways about doing it. Uh, a lot of the books, a lot of the gurus, I know Blake Snyder did a lot of weird stuff with his note cards. Whatever helps you, whatever helps you. Now the issue that I'm having is, is room. Because I think act two, let me check my notes real quick. Act two ends with the graveyard shift. And let's find the let's find the graveyard shift. Where is the graveyard shift? There we are. Graveyard shift is yellow. This is this is why we do visual outlining. Um okay, okay, so graveyard shift is down here. Well hang on. It seems the graveyard shift is kicking off act three. Well that's not what I want. Act it's supposed to end act two it's supposed to live here not start there and i think a big part of that is because i have so many horizontal cards that I, i've run out of room so i'm gonna have to redo a lot of these cards and check back in with you guys because the last segment is home sweet home the ghost story and i don't even have room for it there. I got all the cards just hanging out right there because I've run out of room. Now, this is actually a good problem because I was concerned about having enough content for this horror anthology. And it's beginning to look a lot like, not Christmas, but not a problem. And that's, that's great. That's great. So I'm going to fast forward a bit here. And we're going to take a look at this board with some of these horizontal cards uh, in, in a vertical formation and see what it looks like then. And we're back. As you can see, it's a little more organized. It's a little more clean. The Act 1 is packed. It is tight. Uh, the first half of Act 2 looks pretty good. The second half of Act 2, a little loose. A little loose. It's almost like there's enough room for another card or two. So that's something that I'll keep in mind. And this, that right there is the point of visual outlining, is finding where your gaps are. Maybe you have too much, like Act 1. Maybe you don't have enough, like the second half of, of Act 2. And Act 3 down there is looking pretty good. Uh, the hidden light and home sweet home. So we've got it. We've got it all, all good to go. And this is something that I'll refer to when I'm writing. So that's gonna do it for visual outlining and note cards. There's really not a lot of mystery to it. It's just the scenes put on a cork board. And you can plug and play move things around. Uh, in this case, it's just segments in a horror anthology, so there's really not all that much to it, but it's nice to have it up there. We did see a couple problems. Act 1's looking a little jam-packed. Maybe that's just how the notes were phrased. Maybe it is going to run a little long. Pacing in a horror anthology is something we're going to be playing with uh, this whole process. I think, I mean, it's going to go from scary to scary. So we're going to have different types of stories, but I think it should be fine. So I'll be referring to that often when I'm writing, which is probably going to be the next thing that we, we do. I think, I think we've done everything that we could do as far as notes, 
outlining, note cards, character bios, research, playlists, music playlists. I got a little playlist that's a bunch of scary music. Um, the title, I, I have changed the title to The Town That Drip Blood. I just... I just I wasn't really feeling feeling the other ones. I wanted to like Suburban Shadows. I wanted to go with Tales from Warren County. But I think the town that drip blood, especially since it's sort of a play on the house that drip blood, which is a famous horror anthology film. So the fact that it all takes place in a town, it just makes sense. I, I feel more confident saying it. If you watch these other videos back, every time I would say Suburban Shadows, it was... I guess. But The Town That Drip Blood, uh, I like it. I think we're definitely going to be rolling with that. And I think the next video is going to be us cracking open our, our, our screenwriting software, which we'll get into, and writing. It's November 27th. We've been doing pre-writing here for a couple months. It's time. So thanks for watching, and I will see you very soon.